All right, we're live. We're live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another extraordinary episode of the Extraordinary Exchange Podcast. I am your guy, Mr. Nate Bennett, one of the co-hosts. I got uh, my feeling guest again, Mr. Benz. What up, fam? We back again. Rotation play. You sub me in when you need me. You know, hit the bench when I'm good. When Case is back, so you know. I'm just here for a yeah, yeah, all day, all day. Case is enjoying Jamaica. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, you know, president of extraordinary investment group that who that's who powers this uh this space that we have here and uh we got we got four squares we got the four hollywood squares today. it's the first time <laughs> how we've done this but uh we've got some extraordinary women uh on the, on the podcast this evening um serial entrepreneurs in a space that's really near and dear to my heart we're going to talk about um just health in general, mental health, elderly health, um, just taking care of our our fiscal health is is, is kind of what we've always focused on with the investment group. But um, having a more well-rounded approach, taking care of other areas of our life is, is super important as well. Because if you if you're securing the bag, but you're you can't you know flourish because your your health or your mental or, or other areas of your life are lacking, then then what good is it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so starting in the bottom, uh, we have the ladies from AI Caring Hands. We got Miss Andrea Pumphrey and Antoine Watson. Ladies, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having us. And then we also have Miss Angelica Newsom, who um, offers services through Life in Full Color Counseling and Wellness as well. So Angelica, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So <clears throat> let's just start. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of introduce yourselves um, and let the viewers know, you know, who you are and what you do. All right. Jill, you want to start? Um, I'm Angelica. I am a therapist with Life in Full Color Counseling and Wellness. I am a social worker by trade. Um, I'm also a board approved supervisor. I've spent my entire career doing medical social work and doing therapy on the side. Um, and so I have a real passion for the health field and making sure that it integrates in mental health. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to be here. All right, I'm Antoine Watson and I'm one of the owners of AAI Caring Hands, one of three. And um, my passion, I guess, would be massage, but also home care for elderly people and helping them to age in place and helping them to have a, a certain quality of life as they get older. Um, and I do that through the company, which we provide uh, in-home services, medical services, but also through massage and body work and helping people to become comfortable with different traumas that they may have experienced throughout their life that have been stored in their body. And a lot of times with elderly people, obviously you live the whole life. Mm-hmm. And some of them have never had a massage, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. Um, but not surprisingly if you think about you know different times. Uh, but, you know, helping them through stretch, through massage, through, I'm not a talk therapist, but through talking as well. Um, and that's how I help. Okay. My name is Andrea Pomfrey. I'm also one of the owners of three uh, for AAI Caring Hands. And um, just like Antoine mentioned, uh, we, you know, help elderly people age in place. We definitely, we also help with the addiction community as well um, on the West Coast. Um, and we also do a multitude of things just to, you know, provide that hub for our clients so that when they come here, it's a one-stop shop. They don't really have to, you know, we don't have to outsource um, services that they need in order for them to have their wellness needs met um, and, and also their personal needs on a day-to-day basis just so um, that aging in place or dealing with addiction can provide a safe environment and, and a place where they're more comfortable. I love it. Um, I love a good origin story, and I feel like mm-hmm. it kind of sets the tone and and incorporates some relatability. Um, so if someone was kind of in your shoes and kind of thinking about starting something like you ladies have started, mm-hmm. um, it, it may inspire them to take that step uh, of faith to do so. So if you wouldn't mind sharing, you know, what inspired you to um, not just get into the field that you're in, but to kind of grassroots start your own initiative, your own business as well, please. Okay. So 
our business um, started officially in September of 2019, so right before the pandemic, right? So that was like some good forward thinking on our part, but not, not we didn't know, but. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we started September 2019. Uh, like most people that go into business for themselves or become investors, um, it comes out of, it, it is born out of a need that you have. You know, whether it be a need for freedom, whether it be a need for more money, whether it be a need for, you know, uh, fulfillment in your work. So that's kind of like all three of those slides. We had all been in corporate type jobs. Mm -hmm. We had climbed the proverbial ladder. You know, we had done all the things, checked off all the boxes, right? Mm -hmm. And now here we are, both myself and my sister, uh, 20 years into our careers. You know, we're not at the top top, but we right there. You know, we are management at these jobs. And feeling like, is this it? Is this mm -hmm. gonna be what it is for the next, you know, at that point if you start at twenty in your career and now you're not even forty yet, or on close to forty and you're like already questioning and you might you got another twenty five years of going work, mm -hmm. you know, what are you supposed to do? What you're supposed to do is probably stay at your job, but we're a little bit crazy. So we decided to go ahead and quit our jobs. Yeah. At me, I was like 37, 38. And I was like, oh, you know what? No, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And so um, quit the job. I started the massage business. Shortly after that, um, Andrea and my mom decided that they wanted to jump into, and mm -hmm. my mother's Ida. Um, they wanted to jump in, and we all decided to do this home care business and name it AAI Caring Hands, which is Antoine, Andrea, and Ida. Mm -hmm. um, the business is something that is kind of like a family trade, honestly. Mm -hmm. So all three of us have been doing that type of, my mother, first of all, was doing it my whole life. So I'm 44, so she's been doing it that long and probably longer. Um, when I got of age, after I came out the military, then I started doing home care. Andrea became grown, she was doing home care as well for people. Mm -hmm. um, our aunts, you know, everybody in our family, this is like a, a trade. All the women in our family, we all do this type of work. And so it was just natural to think, you know, well, we've been doing it for other people. So why not do it for ourselves? Because we all seem to have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. And so that is how AAI Caring Hands was born. Mm -hmm. And it was also a tribute to our mother because she had been working um, for people forever. Mm -hmm. And she would have done it forever more. She would have just done it. She came from a different era. She would have mm -hmm. just done it until the day she decided she wanted to retire. But our goal was, okay, you've been doing it for other people. You're going to do it for yourself and reap the whole entire benefit of it, of having your own business, of having your own name or something. You know, this is going to be your your thing that you left for this world with that. Place. So that's how it was, it was birthed. And just to keep the context going, what uh, what happened to help you bring the services that Angelica brings in? What did she bring in and what she's add to the, the situation and, and how did that, you know, keep things going for you? So for for the part of, um, for the wellness part and the, the counseling for social work, she brought in the resource. She was a part of, once you secure the patient, you, you have the service, you have the business already. Now we need to now add additional resources that these elderly people or these, you know, um, people with addiction now can have um, access to in the community that they have no knowledge of. Mm -hmm. So at some point we needed, we, we knew at the very beginning that a layer of uh, social work had to be involved because, you know, we're limited to, we're on the business aspect and for the healthcare part of it, we knew it, it, that's something that goes hand in hand, especially when you're doing, doing with any patient care. So um, that layer of social work had to come in so, so that she could be a resource um, to our community and help them grow in the space that they're in. Yeah. And then also her other part, you know, as I mentioned um, earlier was, you know, mental health. So I think that people don't think of mental health services when it comes to elderly people, because most times, you know, we're talking about baby boomers and before them. And that mental health was not a um, not something that people actively sought help for. You know, they just kind of like put that person in the basement or that person see now, you know, they just kind of write them off like that. But it is an issue and it's something that we've been, you know, we had been noticing most of our clients have Alzheimer's, but before they get there, before they get to the part where they completely 
you know, are no longer here, you know, mentally, they don't know what's going on. Before they got there, they did have parts where they were kind of in and out and they needed somebody to help talk them through that. Mm-hmm. You know, because you get a diagnosis that you have Alzheimer's and now what? You just sit around waiting for the day where you don't remember your children anymore or your husband or your wife anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, but sometimes, a lot of times, they need someone to walk them through that process. You know, and your family is not enough because honestly, families get irritated. Yeah. They're not able to deal with their mother or their father forgetting who they are. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they either one, get angry, um, two, just stop coming around. Or three, you know, tell them, you know, you know, I guess that's a, a part of getting angry, kind of like, you know, you know who I am, you know, say, you know, say this, or, you know, they call themselves trying to be helpful, but it becomes aggressive, and then it creates confusion, and so anyway, to alleviate all of that, we invite Angelica, who comes in and who is able to sit with the family, who's able to go through the stages of really grieving, grieving. You know, really, it's a stage of grieving because the person hasn't physically died, but, you know, in a way they have. Mm -hmm. And the family needs to deal with that process, you know, and find a way to deal with it that's going to be beneficial to a person who's also losing Mm -hmm. in in this. I mean, that's the main, they're the main character in this. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where she comes in to kind of bring um, some harmony to the process. And even if it's not Alzheimer's, some of our patients have MS, some have Parkinson's, some have cancer, some have, mm-hmm. you know, a multitude of things. Some some of them have all of those things. You it's know, so which is they're yeah. just getting older. Exactly. They don't even have to have something extra to be able to take advantage of those services that she has. They're just yeah. getting older. And just like we need that, you know, as middle aged or millennials or Gen Z's, however, whatever you identify with, like we, we all need these services. So, right. right. Um, right. Could, could we hear your your origin story, Angelica? Because it sounds like you you were in that space naturally, probably working for someone else, and you were just like, I can do that myself. Or I can do this better because you you see little chinks in the arm or little holes and processes and systems. And you're like, oh, I don't like how that's run. I can run this a lot better. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's funny. Um, I'm also in a family industry. My mother is a social worker. I went to the same schools as her. It was not intentional. It's just mother knows best kind of a thing. It just so <laughs> happened that everything that she was like, I think you should do this. Then I was like, I think I'm going to do this. She had already planted the seeds. So, um, but yeah, I've been a medical social worker since I got out of school. Before that, I was like a health advocate um, doing volunteer work, um, mostly with like refugees and asylees, and then got into the hospital social work. And that was around the time that Maryland was doing these care transformation grants and giving hospitals um, money for care coordination programs. And so um, I got to be kind of like a, you know, guinea pig and build these programs out um, under those grants. Um, And I love it. It's outpatient work, but it's it's a combination of dealing with their medical and their mental health um, and trying to evoke, you know, change in terms of habits and those sort of things. Um, and then it's working with families. And I kept doing that um, for various hospitals and organizations and got to the point where it's like your boss is continuously giving you this feedback, like, you're amazing. Oh, you do so well, this and the other. But it's not translating to mm-hmm. moving on. Um, and so it's, you know, you can only do that for so long. And then I don't know how many people are familiar with hospitals, but in terms of the structure for care management, you have your care managers, which are multiple nurses and social workers, and then you might have a manager, and then you have the director of care management. Sometimes there's a lead position, sometimes not, and most of the time that lead is somebody that's got to work the floor too. Um, And so there's not any upward mobility. And that's the frustration. You go to these organizations, they're asking you why you left. And you're like, hey, I left because there's no growth. And they're like, we've got this. Like, I've been told, like, yes, we have this position. And I'm like, okay, I'm signing on with this position. And then it's like, no, not yet. But hold on. Bait and switch. Yeah. (laughs) And so um, I I got burned out. I got frustrated. 
Mm-hmm. I didn't feel valued or seen. And then you're also not delivering care the way that you want to. You're delivering it based on these grants, the hospital and, um, you know, social work is a, a different kind of industry. And I think sometimes people don't understand the way that we have to come at um, patient care. They want us, they need us there, but then you really don't want to hear that um, my solution isn't going to get this person out tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I just was like, I can't do this anymore and decided to bet on myself. Starting my own private practice was not part of my plan whatsoever. It was like in the very far future, this is my retirement plan later in life kind of a thing. Um, and now here it is. Um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's how it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Bet on yourself. <laughs> that, not only, not only, um, does betting on yourself in that scenario come along with you building your business, but mm-hmm. you still have to perform the job of that business. So you still have to mm-hmm. be, be, be there for your patients at the same time. So yeah. I know that's a hard thing to juggle, trying to actually build a business, make it sustainable, yet at the mm-hmm. same time still be there for your patients and serve, serve and do everything you got to do at the same time. So yeah, it, it's everything's happening at once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, when you're in grad school for social work, they know that we are going to probably, some of us are going to end up being in private practice, mm-hmm. but yet they don't prepare you with the skills in terms of the business side of how to do that. And so what ends up happening and what I'm finding is, and thank God I have like a network of social workers um, that I can go to and a mentor, but you end up just kind of piecing it together and getting this gem from this person. And they're like, Oh, go talk to this person. Or this is what I recommend. Like people are telling you and guiding you based on their personal experience, because there's no class for us. (laughs) There there wasn't a class. There's not, um, a guideline, like, no, there's no how to. So Mm -hmm. yeah, we're figuring it out. And and to that, there's multiple ways to skin the cat, right? There's Mm -hmm. multiple ways that you can do it. But like you said, like certain people are giving you their personal testimony and telling you, well, I don't know if this is right, but this is what I did. Sometimes they can provide you with this is what I would have done if I had Mm -hmm. to do it over. So maybe you can follow that blueprint. But yeah, like you're you're just you're figuring it out on the go. And that, in essence, is what entrepreneurship is. Like we're just problem solving. We're, We're we're bidding on ourselves. We're figuring stuff out as we go, being resilient um, where, where that, you know, that mental health comes in um, because it's it's just you, you know, like the, the frustration of working for someone else. At least, you know, you know what your income is going to be like, you know, what that that structure is going to be. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I'm not doing it the way I want to. I'm doing it the way I want to. But where does money going to come from? Right. I had this week my my breakdown about the consistency of money. So here's my <laughs> vulnerability. I had this moment where I was like, I, oh my gosh, I'm used to X amount of money each month and this coming in and it being consistent. Um, and when you're doing billing and stuff, a lot of times you're getting paid once a month at the end of the billing cycle. Mm-hmm. And it's an adjustment. Mm-hmm. Um And so it's also like, here I am trying to figure out the finances for a business and opening this account and figuring out how this is going to go. And then Mm -hmm. I'm having to adjust my personal finances too. Mm -hmm. Um, And Antoine, you know, said that like, when you start doing entrepreneurship, you find out how much your self-worth was tied to your Mm -hmm. job and how much money you were making. And I, total transparency, like that was me. Like it slapped me in the face. I didn't realize you know, how much that was, I bet it on knowing exactly how things were going to fall out. Mm-hmm. And that's not the case anymore. Yeah. 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 That's, that's definitely one of the biggest lessons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One thing I'll say about entrepreneurship, and this is now for me, I started doing massage as a business in 2016. And in this now seven years, February was seven years for me of this, you know, and thankfully in that seven years, I haven't worked for anybody. You know, and it wasn't because I was doing so wonderfully. It was because every time that I started to lose hope in what I was doing, then it was like, you know, whoever, the God of your understanding um, would show up 
and I'd be like, but if I go get a job, then I'm gonna spend two hours or eight hours probably making what I could make in one hour. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense. So it's like I was constantly bargaining with myself about how I should spend my time. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and as she said, you know, you get to a place where you're like, I was the one, like I showed up with the money. Like, oh, you know, everybody got the drinks, you know, <laughs> I got the whatever. Y'all want to go to something every night of the week? Okay, I'll, I'll be there. And now you like, ah, can I get a water with lemon? <laughs> and you're drinking it slow because you like, man, you know. So, yeah, that financial situation being tied to your um, self-worth is real. Is and, that's, and that's kind of why I asked because the entrepreneurial journey is a struggle in and of itself. Yes. And I know that personally, but yes. also, also felt bad may not be the word for, but cared about, um, mental health, pe mental health pra practitioners, um, doctors, nurses, because I always feel like if you're in the role of caring for others, it's, it's a hard place to be at that role as a main profession when you got your own real life, personal <laughs> life, financial <laughs> life. And yeah. so like to compartmentalize that, because I know yeah. me personally, it's times I'm not going to. I can probably deal with my own issues or my own business issues. Yeah. Alone, today I got to go in and deal with Mr. John's issues. You know what I mean? So, it's, exactly. and I, so I, I just I just commend all of you guys for for doing that and, and juggling those two things at the same time. I know it has to be a struggle. It is. It absolutely it is. is. It absolutely is. And I think it's one of those struggles that um, we were talking about this earlier today. It's one of those struggles that it, it's an ongoing thing. You know what I'm saying? And you learn from each situation. You learn from each. Um, episode that goes on, but um, it's also one of those things for us that we've been very grateful to have mm -hmm. because those struggles is what made us level up. Yeah. You know, we when we came into this, you know, if you want to say you got it from the trenches, we got it from the trenches because yeah. mm -hmm. we literally sat in the front room of, of our parents' home and we was like, hey, I'm not working for nobody. You ain't working for nobody. All right, this is what we're going to do. Okay. And, and we just kind of you know, self-propelled from there and, and just each level of success or, or goals being met, um, you know, it was hard. It was really difficult. It was really hard for us. And then that, like I said, that leveling up is what we ended up doing. We was forced into it because yeah. it was like, listen, you either going to go in it or you going to fall. Yeah. Do you want to eat or not? Is the question. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hungry? Because if you are, you got water. Or you can have ramen, or maybe you can have chicken. <laughs> so these are your three choices, but it's yeah. going to depend on what time you woke up this morning, which one you're going to get. Yeah. It's going to depend on how hard you went to get that client that you thought you couldn't get. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to sometimes depend on how many hours you're willing to spend on trying to get that client. You know, and one thing I'm going to say, I want to say is um, Andrea is like the lead AI wouldn't even float honestly if it wasn't for her because she has a level of determination that it's like she can't be stopped and it's like when all else is just like failing she's like a very solutionary person there is no like i'm the person that's like i don't know i think we should talk <laughs> <laughs> you know but she's the person that's like no 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 Give me a give me an hour. I'm gonna call y'all back, and this world will call you back with ten solutions. And you're like, where did you come with that? Where did, where did you come up with that? You know. And I really like if you don't have somebody in your team like that, your business. You know, they talk about that five years. Mm -hmm. It's real. It's real. But the real, the other real part of it is, you have to have somebody, if not all of you, at least one of you has to be the one that will not, will not, will not take no for an answer. And she is that person. You know, my my mother and I are the are the workers, is what I always say. We're the ones. She can come up with twenty jobs, and we'll go do all twenty of them. You just come up with the work, and we'll go do it. You know, and she'll go do it too. But it's like, no, 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 don't you do it. Come up with twenty more things. We'll work this from eight a.m. to eight p.m. or eight a.m. to eight a.m. because it's been like that too. Um, and we'll come back, and you tell us what we gotta do the next day. You know, so the hustle spirit is one part, but that willingness to never take no for an answer, the ability to, to flip it and reverse it in terms of a solution, you know, to see a problem and figure out what to do about it, even if it's unconventional. Mm -hmm. You know, she has that natural gift and that has been the thing that has kept us here now four years going into five years or going into four years, excuse me, as of September, we'll be in four years of this business and she's the reason why. So... 
her innovation and her determination. Did not think we would have a missing misdemeanor, Elliot. Let me then reverse it. Hey, what? Bands in case are the visionaries. They are the problem solvers, and they they're very witty. Like they think on their toes. Not That's it. Oh, you get that to me. Let me go ahead and execute. Mm -hmm. I'll put the resources in front of everybody and make sure it gets done. But yeah, you, you definitely need to have those those visionaries. But yeah. you mentioned um, client acquisition. Right. So in that field, in most fields of business, you have your you know patient, client, consumer acquisition. And then you have your consumer retention. Um, mm -hmm. Go back to the beginning. You know, you've established your business. What is what is the the client acquisition process look like for y'all to be successful with your business? So, really, our our, our acquisition of of new clients is is really it encompasses a, a, quite a bit of things. So, um, we put in place for new clients, levels of care, so that we could target um, different clients with different um, skill uh, care needs. And so, and then on the flip side of that, then be able to have caregivers to be able to have, to be able to have those credentials to provide that care. So when I go out and I'm advocating for new businesses or new business of, of clients, um, I make sure that our client mix uh, makes sense to the bottom line for the most part. Um, I want to make sure that we have enough of our baseline, our middle line, and our, and our top tier clients. And our top tier clients are those who um, need total care. These are people who can't do anything for themselves for the most part, and they heavily rely on uh, human uh, factor for their day-to-day -day life. And so we needed to make sure that we could now then balance that out with um, the support of, of staff um, to be able to render that care to our, our clients. So, you know, that's the mindset that I go in when I'm when I'm looking for um, new clients or if I'm doing uh, if I'm getting a client from the hospital versus um, being referred a client from the Department of Aging. Um, this is somebody that's already at home versus somebody that's being discharged and needing, you know, more critical care. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's pretty much how we kind of, you know, deal with our new acquisitions. And then we have the, also the part about um, a long-term long -term care insurance is another mm -hmm. avenue that we use to um, attain clients. Yeah. In the corporate world, Andrea was, um, that's the field that she was in, as, mm -hmm. um, medical care like that. And so with that being said, she had a lot of um, pre-existing relationships with different people. Mm -hmm. And then also um, just because of all that she knew from the job that she was in for so many years, when she was when she was able to get on the phone with these people, you know, it was like they felt very comfortable in knowing that, oh, this person knows what they're talking about, mm -hmm. which means our business looks good. Mm -hmm. And they feel comfortable in referring people to us because they're like, oh, this person is, is very well versed on insurance and how that works mm -hmm. and how to to write the how the patient care notes need to be written in order for us to pay our client which will then you know pay us will be you know re will actually pay us and then they will be reimbursing the client but um so i think that was the thing is like you need to have a level of competence and because she was in that world for so long she had that level of competence mm -hmm. and has that level of competence and so that's another way we've been able to get clients and then as i said earlier We've been in this business for as long as I've been alive. You know, my mother was in this business. Mm -hmm. So we've also gotten clients because we took care of somebody's grandmother. And now the, the people, the children that hired to take care of their grandmother now need to take care of their mother. You know, so that's a good long term business relationship that we didn't even know we were establishing. You know, this was just us coming in, doing our work mm -hmm. to the best of our ability and people remembering us. Oh, Ida. That's our mother. Ida, oh, she used to take care of so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Call her. I think I still got her number. Mm -hmm. And they called, and then we, we got clients that way. Mm -hmm. You know, we've gotten clients because we've been in, in someone's house taking care of a loved one and a PT person or a social worker or a, you know, OT, occupational therapy. One of these modalities has come into the home. Mm -hmm. And when they came there, they, they – had a brief interaction with us, but they thought we were professional and they thought that we knew what we were doing and they thought all these great things about us. And now they're, we have anonymous 
um, referrals that come to us. And that's the thing. We have a name for a person, <laughs> but we've never met them. And then, like, I saw you this one time at this one house, and we're like, where, when? We don't remember too many houses that we're in and out of. But we've had so many, most of our clients are through referral. That's like 90% of how we get clients. And it's usually somebody who had an interaction, a very brief one, one of the three of us. And now here we are with somebody new to, to, uh, to serve. Mm -hmm. So that part has been a great benefit to us. So you guys have talked about a lot of different kinds of services that you mm -hmm. offer. What mm -hmm. are like your most typical common most popular services that you offer and like what do people what do people say hey you guys do really well and and, and, and go to you for refer you for like what's the what's your you know highlights of your of your, of your services that you offer so on the east coast mm -hmm. um elderly care and disabled care all day i mean they it it's it has taken off so much we we are we sit in awe most of the time because we can't believe it mm -hmm. and and only because we're so humble you know what I mean? We may know that we have a good thing going into the patient's home, but I'm very humble. Antoine's very humble, and so is my mom, because we're not in it for, you know, the prize of, if we were in it for the money, we wouldn't be in it, even though it's a very lucrative business. But um, we're in it because it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. It's a compassion to want to take care of somebody and, and, and get them better. Uh, on the West Coast, detox, for sure. I mean, we're killing it. We're killing it in the Bay Area. We're absolutely kill killing it. We have we are competing with companies that have been in business for forty some years. Mm -hmm. So you know we have really hit a lot of um, we, we we've taken off a lot faster than we have um, than we anticipated. And so even with that, you sometimes you have to back down a little bit because um, you know as we want to provide care for everybody, sometimes we have to. Put, you know, we have to put it in a box and say, hold on now. We can't grow. You know, we got to grow and, and make sure that as we reach these different heights that we are able to bring in these other things so that we can, you know, we can preserve that growth. So, yeah, you want to make sure you got the capacity to handle right. you know, the, 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 the way you're growing. Um, so y'all talked about acquisition. Um, mm -hmm. Angelica, if you could talk about the... Uh, client or patient retention side and i'm sure adding a service like angelica's mm -hmm. um, and and being more valuable to the clients that you're servicing is one way of of retaining them for sure um but how how, how are some uh, systems processes some techniques that you've used on the business side to retain those clients outside of just providing amazing services of course yeah um i think that the biggest thing is the goals and so what are we working towards and did you reach those? And if we're not reaching those, you know, um, what do you need in order to reach those? And so if you are showing someone that you're willing to keep going with them, then they're going to stay with you. And that, I mean, I, I come from the medical background, so I've always used um, like the metaphor, like you are the captain and I'm a part of your team. So I'm like, coach me, tell me what's going on. Like, where are we going? Where are we headed with this? Um, and specifically to like elder care, it's being the advocate. And also with elder, elder care, it's paying attention to the family. So as much as you're there for the client and making sure they get the services, a lot of times I'm giving counseling, supportive counseling, whatever, a debrief education to families, validating them. Antoine mentioned, you know, families that are dealing with Alzheimer's, um, you know, a lot of the reason that I think I'm building this rapport that's going to keep going is because, um, for example, they'll tell me like, mom's doing this. She like took her pants off. She refused to put on pants and like answer the door. And instead of being like, oh my gosh, or just being like, you know, some way about it, I'm like, that's silly. Isn't that funny? Like kind of making it like, we don't have to be concerned about all those things. Like, we don't have to be upset by some of the things that we know they're going to do, right? Um, we can laugh, like we can laugh, we can joke about it a little bit, you know? Um, I sometimes I'll say, you know, I'm going to share something personal if you're okay with it. And I'm like, hey, my grandmother has Alzheimer's. And I'll share that she randomly put on a knee brace and was like, I just had knee surgery. 
And like somebody else would have like freaked out or felt the need to like, no, for me, I'm just like, oh gosh, you had knee surgery, but maybe we need to, I don't think they told you to keep it on all day. Cause you know, I'm also worried about it doesn't fit her. She don't need that circulation issue. Um, so I think when you're talking about retention, especially with the kind of care that AAI is giving, the reason that they're retaining their patients is because they're bringing people in. You're a part of a family. You know, I think a lot of people say that AAI specifically does that and I get to be a part of that. Um, but they become like family. They know everyone. They're participating. They're walking through life with this um, older adult and allowing them to still be social, still do the things that they normally do. You know, I've seen them um, attend like one of their clients lived in a community and there was like a Thanksgiving dinner and they took the patient down to the Thanksgiving dinner. And we're in there cutting it up with not only the patient and making sure they were social, but with the other older adults that are residents there, you know? And then again, when they're talking about referrals and acquisitions, now they're a part of that community. They're known. So they're really becoming a part of that patient's family. And it just mm -hmm. blossoms from there. Now, it sounds like you guys really have a lot of a full uh, array of a lot of really dope services that you offer people. Um, mm -hmm. But I, doing it at the high level that you do it, I know it can't be inexpensive. So I know I know that's a concern for a lot of people of getting their older adult in their family proper care mm -hmm. at a reasonable rate. So I guess my question for you is, A, how's the pricing structure set up? And are you mostly receiving um, insurance paying for most of this? Or how is that going? For most people so um with the different levels of care like um i mentioned we try to stay competitive with the industry um the industry kind of sets the tone honestly for uh what this new age can uh, afford and and sometimes um when you start dealing with people who uh would prefer per personal care versus being in a facility they already know that they're going to put out some money OK, because it, it's not inexpensive to have care in your home. It's not crazy, but it, it but it, it can be pricey due to whatever your um, disease state is or whatever your your personal situation is. So um, it, it, it's not, you know, it's not crazy, but it, it but I guess for our client base um, and we try to even stay under the radar just so that we can we can do life with you, not just a short time with you. I want to do life with you. So I've, if, if the industry is saying it's $45 an hour, we're going to come in at 30. You know, I want to retain you. I want to keep your business. And what can I do? And then outside of that, I want you to cut off a couple other things because we can do these things for you as well. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, that's that's one of the things that we do. And yes, we do have insurance mix. So long term care does play a huge part in it because that those generations invested in themselves and a lot of them have investments as well so they have income coming in on a monthly basis that they've been receiving for 30 plus years and they've been retired for 40 years you know what i mean so um we have a lot of people who just did really good with their money they did very good and they planned for this day mm -hmm. and so now they kind of reap the benefits of yes i'm aging in place and yes you're meeting me where i am right now but it's on my terms so, um, you know, it, like I said, it, it, it's not crazy um, in terms of expense, but if you're um, looking for personal care, then you already are intending to pay a, a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other part of that is, um, you know, we are a 24 hour company. So we have people that come in, our, our minimum is four hours, right? Mm -hmm. So people come in and maybe they're just, you know, getting into this. And they may have had like, they might've just gotten out of rehab in terms of having a surgery, then going to a rehab place. Now they're at home trying to learn how to navigate their homes, right? So they might do a four hour thing with us starting. And then as the need grows for them, we've had plenty of, most of the people that we have, it starts out like this. You get four hours, Okay, I'll do four hours, say at thirty dollars an hour. Okay, I'm spending one hundred twenty dollars three times a week, right? So that's three sixty, right? And so then you're like, okay, time goes on, and you're like, okay, well maybe I need them another hour. So you might add another hour each of those days. So it becomes a gradual right thing, right. you know. And there's other people that come in and they're right at you know the top of full care, mm -hmm. and they're like, okay, 
you know, the, the, the husband, the wife, the children, whoever has been taking care of this person for the last five years mm-hmm. when they need a break. Yeah. And so they're like, listen, on the weekends, come in for eight hours, Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it, we give people so many ways of doing it so it, be, it can be affordable mm-hmm. if it's a necessity for you. Right. You know, again, there's other people that we talk, we are with them 24 hours a day. Yeah. There's people that we're with 12 hours a day. There's people that are in facilities and we come in for five or six hours a day with them, you know, a couple of days a week. There's people that are wherever they are, they need us to come and do transportation for them. So we come and pick them up and take them to their appointments and the family takes it from there, but they get that time to have a break yeah. while we take them to an appointment, you know, or take them to the hairdresser or take them to go get their nails and feet done, whatever it is, take them out to lunch even, you know, because we do companion care. You know, we also offer concierge care, where it's like we had a client one time that got out of, um, out of um, one that wanted her, that's the coming with the stockings. Oh yeah, she she came out of rehab, she had a procedure done and she she needed something very simple. Right. But um, we were coming every morning for this concierge service for her for two hours. Yeah. And um, she said, I might need two hours, but it might be an hour. Mm -hmm. So we gave her a concierge price. And she was okay with paying the price because it made sense. You guys are coming all the way over here. And the owner's coming. You know, we still go and see the patients ourselves. So the owner's coming. Oh, my God. You know, and then we also have our caregivers to back it up because we do go in because we want to get the idea of seeing how this person is before we place them with one of our caregivers so that we can make sure it's a good fit. And I think that's part of how we set ourselves apart, you know, from other companies and how we um, be, are, are retained for so long by different people is because you don't have a relationship with us that you don't know one of the three of us personally, you know, if not all three of us. But you definitely will have a relationship with one of the three of us and be able to reach out at any time and call Antoine, hey, um, you know, I'm in your, uh, this is what's going on. Can this happen? Can that happen? Or I'm having this issue. Whatever the whatever the concern is, or whatever the the compliment is, I'm available. Mm-hmm. You know, Andrea is available. Ida is available. So you can call us at any time. A lot of people in older generations hate the fact of having to push this number to get this and push this. They don't like that. Yeah. We eliminate that. That's mm-hmm. not happening. You're not gonna push a number. You're gonna dial our number and we're gonna pick the phone up. Yeah. And if we don't, we're gonna call you right back. You know, and we're going to have a conversation. If we need to, we're going to come to your house the next day and sit down with you Mm -hmm. and go over the thing until the thing is completely dealt with and understood, Mm -hmm. you know, on our side, on their side. So I think that's the thing that that sets us apart. And then with even with employee um, retention, it sets us apart also because our employees know, like, first of all, if you're going to see a new client, we're going to go with you the first day, the first two days until you're comfortable with this person and how to use the equipment that they have. Maybe it's a Hoyer lift. Maybe it's a, you know, whatever it is. You know, we're going to come with you. We're going to help you figure that out. Mm-hmm. We're going to show you how to do it if you don't know, if you have questions. We're going to help you and that client develop a relationship because we most likely have a relationship with them already. Mm-hmm. So we become the stamp that you're good and they're going to trust you now based on us. You know, so that part plays a huge role in our success up to this point. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's something that we don't take lightly because we know that it requires a certain level of, first of all, availability from us, mm-hmm. you know, so that eliminates a lot of vacations. But anyway, <laughs> the, point, <laughs> the point is, yeah. you know, we want to be able to keep our clients and we want to keep our, our um, employees, our staff members. We want them to stay. So. I promise we're not on the same navigation system because you just <laughs> got me right into the next question. I was going to talk about the, 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 how do you, how do you, you know, you're this amazing business. You provide all these services. Um, but, you know, they say good help, good help is hard to find. Like, how are you finding the staff that provides these services to your clients? Um, are those just from referrals as well? Or are you and, and, you know, at the same time, they have to be certified. You have uh, different uh, requirements that you need to adhere to as a business uh, operating in the spaces that you operate. Um, so yeah, how are you finding these people? It's a, the vetting process is 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 a process. Ooh, it's real. It's, it's hard. It's, it's a process, and I'm gonna be real, um, just real transparent about it. You know, it's been a struggle. It's a struggle. It's not easy because it's personal for us. Mm-hmm. This is not just a business. Okay, mm-hmm. this is our livelihood, and this is how 
we not only take care of our family, we take care of other people's families and our staff takes care of their loved ones. Mm -hmm. And so anything that's going to be a dagger to our reputation, we don't play with. Mm -hmm. I don't play with. I, you know, most of the time I'm more on dealing with the front line of our vetting because once our people are, you know, apply and they go through the process and we background check them and we do all that. Now we need to do the skills. Mm -hmm. Now we need to work on what you actually can do. And let me see you in different settings. And I'm and I'm always very I'm a very hands on person. So I want to see you do it. I want you to feel comfortable with me. I want you to feel comfortable with what we got going on mm -hmm. with this patient. And so that process is something that goes on actually for at least 90 days yeah. um, because we want to make sure that you're not only your, your, your mannerism, your temper with patients and, and their uh, instability at times is acceptable because I'm not always going to be there. Antoine and, my, and Ida will not always be there to see what you're doing behind closed doors. And I need to be able to vouch for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that vetting process is very expensive. And it's also something that I take, um, I don't take lightly. We we do show up um, at visits. We do pop-up visits. We don't let our staff know we're coming. We don't even let the client know we're coming. We just show up and we say, you know what? We were in the area, wanted to stop by and see how things was going so that we can see what the atmosphere, what's the vibe like. Mm -hmm. You know, so we don't just rely on the documentation that we get from our staff that they document on a daily basis um, that we're able to see live after every visit or during every visit. Um, but we also, in the, the communication that we get from our clients, we also rely on that that old school pop-up. Mm -hmm. We do that. And that's for both people's, mm -hmm. you know, benefit. It's not because we want to check on the patient, mm -hmm. and it's not because we want to check on the uh, the, the staff member. Mm -hmm. It's for both people's, and right. we've had situations on both sides where we had to defend, defend the, the staff member. Mm -hmm. And we've also had other times we had to defend the client, you know, and it's 50-50. You know, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, but the point is for us is to know both people very well. Mm -hmm. And to, and in that situation, and also that's part of the, the, match the matching process. You know, it's like we're doing dating apps or something here. You know, like, okay, this type of client would do well with this type of staff number. Mm -hmm. So we put them together. And a lot of times it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And we have to go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. and say, maybe put this person with them. Mm -hmm. You know, so that all of this is, as Andrea said, it's, it's very personal to us. So mm -hmm. hiring could be very easy. It could be very easy because, I mean, CNAs are grad graduated today. Right. <laughs> 20 classes graduated today. Right. 20 more classes will graduate next week. It doesn't matter. Like there's this abundance of people, but we don't want everybody. Mm -hmm. We want the people that, because fortunately the people that we've had up to this point have been with us Since for four years one. now, yeah. you know? And so that to me says a lot about how we dealt with them. It says a lot about how they dealt with us and how they have trusted us. And as Andrea said, we're taking care of not only our own family, but taking care of we're responsible for our employees or those who take care of their family. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure things go right. Mm. So that way everybody's gonna eat and that way everybody wants to continue to, to do their best. So we all can continue to eat, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, yeah. when they asked the question, my very first thought was, wow, that the, the proper hiring of the employees that are there in lieu of you Mm -hmm. um might be like one of the most critical pieces of this whole thing because just the, li the liability that you have um reputational wise um uh, legal legally yeah. and just you, you know how folks get when they say oh somebody's taking care of my mom but they gotta how they how particularly be going to be um <laughs> it's, it's, you can easily put yourself in in a situation where um it could definitely hurt the rep reputation very easily if one little thing goes wrong right. um so that guy's uh, yeah that's that's a big critical part of it um that's yeah. a good question man. yeah um now real quick now I got to double back for a second. Me, I'm originally from Baltimore. So um, you talked about something that's very important close to my heart is uh, your West Coast addiction situation that you have going on. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a part of the country where drug epidemic is a very real issue. Mm -hmm. Most people have some type of issue in their family one way or on one side of the coin um, that's affected you. So to hear that you're doing that um, is a great thing to hear. Can you give me a little more information, color what you guys, exactly, what you're doing and you know how the outcomes are coming? So for the drug addiction piece, um, we are partnered with some of the leading um, addiction specialists and physicians in on the West Coast. 
So we have a lot of big name doctors that a lot of our um, nurses have been working with for many, many years. And a lot of these, um, the cool thing about it is a lot of these addiction programs, especially sober living houses, have been birthed from someone who had addiction. And so we work with a lot of um, former, addicts. former addicts and 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 people who have um, you know gotten through that challenge and, and and every day obviously is is a testimony to their strength to keep going by giving back. And so um, we we decided to partner with them and making sure that as much of the community of people that we can clean up um, in terms of giving them the support and the companionship that they need to get through some of the roughest times and trauma that they're dealing with in their life. Um, because a lot of these addiction homes have are encompassed counselors, uh, you know, different types of therapists um, to be there with them 24 seven. And now we get to place our staff in that same setting to support these people one on one 24 seven around the clock. So, um, you know, that just brings, uh, I mean, the gratitude that we feel to be able to help somebody or help a loved one that has not yet given up on their family member, but they're at their wit's end because they're trying to do everything they possibly can. And and just to kind of just put this in, in perspective, the people that we're taking care of are people that have voluntarily gone into the program themselves. These are people that are very, um, most of these people are very wealthy and they want to be private about their struggle with addiction. Um, these are people who are serial business owners just like us. Um, people who have very successful careers but have fallen short because they have this second part of their life that the world doesn't see but is taking them down slowly. Mm -hmm. So we get to get up close and personal with some of these wonderful people that are going through the you know a lot of rough times and have been going through it for many years. Um, so that's that's what we do um, on the West Coast, and that and that's how private and personal it is um, one on one. So I deal with a lot of the owners um, of these these organizations, and a lot of the physicians. Um, our regional manager is very instrumental in kind of bridging those relationships, so that um, when I do travel out there, you know, we have these meet and greets on how we can, um, you know, how we can come together in a partnership to just keep the keep the good work going. Mm -hmm. And we, um, Angelica has recently uh, kind of partnered with, or working on a partnership, right? With a um, company here in Baltimore that does uh, the same type of addiction, halfway house type of um, scenarios here in Baltimore. So I'm not sure how far y'all are into that or if, it's, if you're able to talk about it yet. Yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay, 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 okay. But, you know, just to say that like, you know, it's growing on both sides. Man. Yeah. Like at one point, the addiction thing was only in California. But as you said, we live in Baltimore. You yeah. know, Andrew lives in Columbia. Angelica and I live in Baltimore. And, you know, it's the heroin capital. You know, that's where it's at. That's mm -hmm. you go on North Avenue right now or ne tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And you're going to be some addicts there, you know, mm -hmm. to yeah. greet you. And so we want to be able to... Um, hopefully somehow bring that type of um, support here to the Baltimore area. Like, again, we have, our focus has been elderly care and disabled care here, but because we've become so well-versed in it and on the West Coast, it's kind of like, why not? You know, why not? It's, it's, a, it's a problem here too. I love what you guys got going on and how you, uh, you're focused on a lot of underserved communities that people mm -hmm. that need help um, and that need structured programs from good caring people um mm -hmm. to help them out so i love it i love it yeah. let me let me ask this um so if if someone wanted to young person medical field wanted to kind of set up their own business similar mm -hmm. to what you guys do you have any pointers tips for somebody like that in that situation that would you know guide them or resources for somebody in that situation um i would say you know, if you're going to do it with your whole heart, do it. Yeah. Because you're going to need it. Don't do it for the money. I mean, like she said earlier, the money is there to be made. But the the amount of people that are in need, to be honest with you, be you're honest. in the age. Be honest with us. Oh, I, dealing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to figure out how to frame this, but I'm just going to say it. Um, you're dealing with 
we recently um, joined EIG with a, for a Juneteenth event, June 19th, right? right. And we know what that's all about. Yep. And a lot of the people that you're dealing with for care mm -hmm. are the people that are like, why do we need to even do a June, Juneteenth? What is that? Okay, so we're um, Black people, African Americans, mm -hmm. serving people in a way that at another time, we wouldn't have been getting paid for. There wouldn't have been a business they came to. Okay, they would have just said, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So let's not get it twisted in thinking that this is all roses. It's really not. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really not a lot of times because one thing that a person is going to have is their mentality their whole life. Mm -hmm. Okay, and whatever's in your DNA, whatever is interwoven into the fabric of who you are, that's going to be there from day one to day zero. Okay, when it's all said and done, you're going to be who you are. Okay, so as much as we come in and we're helpful, we do this thing, cook for you and clean for you and take you here and there and, you know, remember all the things about you that you love and remind you of those things and da 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 da, da. We go all out, right? It doesn't stop you from being who you are. So if you want to go into this business, know that. Mm -hmm. Know that it's going to be thankless at times. Know that there's going to be days where you're ready to just walk out. Mm -hmm. Know that just because a person has Alzheimer's doesn't mean they don't remember who they were. Okay, so if you're going to go into this type of business, like Andrea said, make sure that you love the type of business. You like the business because there's a lot of businesses that you can do that don't require this. You can go make shirts and T-shirts and things like that. That's also something that you can make money doing. Mm -hmm. We have family members that do that. We can go and do some trash hauling. We got people that do that, too. Yeah. You know, you can go and become a social worker. But that's also the same type of work, too. <laughs> because this is an offside story. At one point, she had a person, Angelica had a person who was uh, only talking to her on the phone. Mm -hmm. And um, this lady was under the impression because of her voice that she was a white woman, that Angelica was a white woman. Mm -hmm. And she would talk about these people Ooh. to Angelica on the phone, a black woman. She told her about these people and how they are taking this and taking that and Trump this and Trump that. So, if you don't love this type of work, if you don't do it because you have a, a heart for service, then this is not the business for you. Yeah. Yeah. So once you lead with your heart, I think the next most important thing is make sure that you have an outline plan that you're willing to be extremely goal-oriented in following. Mm -hmm. um, you're going, things are going to happen, monkey wrenches are going to come into to the system, you know, of you trying to get this up and running. But you know, lead with your heart, go, you know, and, and, and outline your goals for what you intend, what your vision is for this type of business. And then make sure you get the right players on your team, because this is something that you can't conquer on your own. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the need is too, too, too great for one person. And granted, you have control of what you take and don't take. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to be the business that's always turning something down because the likelihood that your referral sources will continue to refer is going to be, you know, become limited because there's never any staffing available. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you really have to go into this being very strategic in your planning because it, it's not an easy job. And like I said, um, I had a, a, a corporate background in so, you know, some of this stuff was just natural for me to kind of pull it together and, and, and put it in place. And um, so that's the outline and that's the plan. The heart was already there. Now I had to round up the, the, the troops so that we could make this happen. Mm -hmm. And so rounding up the troops and getting the white players on the team was just as important as the outline. Mm -hmm. So, you know, lead with your heart in this situation because this, this job is very rewarding and what you can do in somebody's home, what you can bring to somebody who actually does appreciate you and, and the families who do appreciate you. I mean, I get phone calls often, you know, praising me and, and I'm, I'm humble because I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because this is who I am. This, I'm not doing this because this is what you came for, but this is who I am. So, um, and that's I, I would say too, also get yourself connected to Department of Asian, mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce, a nursing home. You have to get contact. You have to get in contact with somebody who has the clients. Mm -hmm. You know, somehow you have to get in contact with that type of person. And it ain't going to be easy because they have their people mm -hmm. that they've had on their preferred provider list forever. Mm -hmm. And somehow you have to set yourself apart. So 
get yourself in, in relationship with those people. So that way you can, um, you know, already have a referral source built in. And then sometimes you won't have to pay for some, some referrals. Yeah. Sometimes you won't have to pay for them, you know, and there's companies that want to let you do that. They will <laughs> happily allow you to pay them for these referrals, but yeah. read that fine print because some of them want you to pay them until death. And that's not a, that's not good business practice no. for you, no. but there's other ones that are upright and they want to provide a, re, a, a referral for you for a one-time fee. Right. You know, and that's more of what you want than somebody who's going to say, you pay us for the one, the, the referral. And then every time you get paid by this person, it's like they the die, lifetime of the job of, of, of you, we interact. get paid. Yeah. And that's, you know, on their side, the business side, that was, I guess, smart for them. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But as the consumer in that situation, that's not going to work yeah. for us, you know, but if you're desperate, you may not read everything and you may find yourself in a very um, upside down. Yeah, it's not a win-win. Mm -hmm. It's not a win-win for you. You know, now you got to pay forever, and that's crazy when you're doing all the work. And we're yeah. talking about retention on you all side. Retention on their side can't be good once people are locked into these contracts and feel like mm -hmm. they're blinded by, you know, these the fine print that you put right at the bottom of the contract. They're like, no, nah, I would have known this was going on. I would have never did it. To this, right? So, um, you know, taking that and 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 and, and sharing those gems is, is definitely a, a good look. Angelica, would you like to add any gems to that? Yeah. Um, if you want to be a therapist, there's multiple ways to do it. So find a program that fits for you, whether that's social work, whether that's to do counseling, or you want to be a side D, or you want to, you know, whatever you want to do, find what resonates with you. For me, it was social work. For somebody else, it's, you know, counseling to be an LCPC. Um, you need a network. Um, whoever you were friends with through your program, keep in touch with them. Whatever professor that you had a special connection with, keep that going. Build your network. Um, these are people that like when I was like, I can't do it or should I do it? Those are the people that, um, you know, are like cheering me on. Those are the people that we create our own little community and talk about, you know, patients and kind of have like our own, um, I don't want to say like support group, but it's like a processing group, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it's all black women and it's beautiful. And I love them. Like they're my friends. Um, but you still have the guy too. What's the guy name you used to work with? No, oh, Maurice. Yeah. Maurice, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maurice is wonderful. But he's right. he's and right. because he's a black male social worker, like rare. Yeah. Um, He's so yeah. good. If you are black, indigenous, or a person of color, and you want to be a therapist, please do it because the industry is like 70% white women, yep. specifically, I think. Yeah. So it's only like 4% black. I think the next highest is like 10% Asian. So our people need us, like our community needs us, so that yeah. they have yeah. the option to choose somebody that shares their identities. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and if you're going to start your private practice, if you've been in it, in it, you've been in a group practice and you're like, I'm ready to branch out or you're making the switch from doing community work for social work or whatever, save some money, <laughs> please save a little bit of money um, to cushion you so that yeah. like when you have that moment of like, oh my gosh, what have I done? I need to go get a job. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. That you have that, you know, yeah. to kind of take that weight off of you for a second. Um, I what I did was very impulsive in my mind for how I lived my life. It was very impulsive. And I wish I had a little bit more of a cushion. Um, you know, things are coming. I mean, I just had my little breakdown and then immediately a check hit. And I was like, oh, I forget how it happened. fine. If you got heart issues, this is not, don't become an entrepreneur. <laughs> You're going to definitely die within the first year. You're gone. It's yeah. harder than watching the football game. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So those are those are the biggest things. And remember your why. I think Antoine and Andrea have been stressing that, too. Mm -hmm. But remembering your why. Um, for me, it was, I want to be valued. And these organizations aren't doing this. And I can't move up. And I can't impact the way that I want to. Um and I wanted more freedom as well. I didn't want to clock in and out. I didn't want to ask permission to go on a trip. Like, 
no, I don't want to do those things. Um, I don't want to have to get up at seven, be on the clock at 7 a.m. I'm more of a like nine, 10 o'clock person because I want to just read my emails, drink my coffee, take my, get slow, get into it. Right. Um, so, yeah, so those would be my advice for everyone if you're considering this work. Nate, what, Nate, what I would say over the course of all our podcasts, um, it's funny how all the entrepreneurs come to the same points of, <laughs> of how I will help them out. It's always, you know, do something that you really care about with your heart. Um, try to try to have your own mental health together when you're approaching it. Find a good team around you. Uh, don't be afraid to network and collaborate. Um, and those those same themes come up in every conversation. Um, and I feel like is is um, the more and more we reiterate those things and we show these success stories, people will be able to do those things successfully. Um, not only is it good, you know, it's good to highlight you individually, but someone else out here is going to hear your story and say, hey, I can do that too. Yeah. So um, I just want to congratulate you ladies for all putting together a great program. And like I said, touching a lot of underserved communities that really need the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, keep doing the same thing. Um, Keep fighting for the for the black therapists out there because we need more of those. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all I'm all about that. I'm all yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I I think I hear an um um an EIG mixer coming with bringing all black excellence to one room. It sounds good. <laughs> we got a couple <laughs> things in the works. <laughs> we got a couple things. We got a couple things in the works. Definitely coming up. Definitely well, coming uh, up. The the mixers coming. They're still. Mm -hmm. And formulation, but the next actual vendor event, should y'all want to take part in that? Um, we've been saying every Friday is Black Friday, even before we had established EIG. So we're highlighting Black businesses. So on Black Friday, y'all heard it here first. Yeah. Listeners, no one, it's, it hadn't been publicly said, but yeah. on Black Friday, we're hosting a Black Friday Black Business Expo. So hold on, it's, it's, it's not dry, you know. Can't can't let the cow out of the bag, Nate. Chill out. Let's, uh, it's, dry. It. it's dry. Yeah, it's dry just because I conceptualized it. We've talked. There we go. About it. I'm gonna make it happen. Like you said, who who, who <laughs> who's the worker? Who's the door? I'm gonna make sure. <laughs> we got the structure in place. You know, we got the proof of concept. We've had three amazing Juneteenth events, so we're gonna yeah. have our summer Juneteenth. Then we'll have our colder inside. Yeah. You know, it won't be like a cookout vibe, but it'll be more like a, a black expo. So. Yeah. Yeah. Coming along with our networking, along with our galas, and and we got a whole bunch of stuff. But this yeah. ain't about us; it's about y'all. How can <laughs> well, we <laughs> embrace those things? So you know, it's very important that we also you know give you guys your flowers as well because we do. We are very proud of the things just to see um, all you black men together just making this happen and just giving back to the community in the capacity that you have been and bringing black excellence together, mm -hmm. you know, that's to be commended because it's not enough of that going on. So, and, and honestly, at our first Juneteenth, the first Juneteenth event that you all had, we got one of the people in your group, we had a client of theirs and we still have that client right now. Okay. So, yeah. you know, that this is a, this is a win-win uh, relationship right here. <laughs> this relationship goes back and forth. So, you know, we can't, talk about ourselves without talking about you all and how you all have contributed to our business. Absolutely. So I got massage clients from that first Juneteenth event. Mm -hmm. I got massage clients from the last Juneteenth event that we just, that you just had. Right. So, you know, this has been, you know, the relationship has been reciprocal, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, we have to give you all as Andrea said, your flowers as well, because, you know, you're part of the, the, when we say get connected to people that were referred to for you, Okay, here we are. You know, thank you. We got we got clients from you all too. I love hearing that long term vision because a lot of the clients that we have that join our events, they're not service based; they're mm -hmm. product based. So right. they want to make sure that they either sell out of their product or they make their their investment back at the event. Mm -hmm. Where all oh, y'all may not necessarily have that. I know y'all been doing massage you know, services right there at the event, but I don't know if you're charging for that there or if you're looking forward like, all right, these are the services that we have. Mm -hmm. And then that long term, bigger picture from being connected yeah. in a community like this that can also you know connect you to the right people. Mm -hmm. That's where the real value of all this is. You and know? that's what I, and that's exactly what I'm saying. That is the value because yes, I we did this last one we did charge for, for that and we made the money that we spent on the vending, but also got clients. Perfect. So it, it was an initial reward <laughs> and it was also a long term reward. Like I said, we got a client right now that's on service with us that we've had 
since whenever since June 1921. Yep. Yep. You know, when that, that event happened, yep. we have a client from that. You know, I have a massage, I have massage clients from that first event. Yeah. So that has been paying long term. Yeah. That was a good investment. The return on investment was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, ladies, for, for continually rocking with us. Um, that's the least we could do is try to, you know, and that's and that's the whole purpose is to yes. try to reciprocate in, in knowledge, information, money, funds, business around the whole community. Um, as we join our community, we're happy to have you a part of it and continue. We're gonna that's not our first, second, third event. You're gonna be and all of them more than welcome to come and hang out with us and all bend right. and all that. We appreciate you. Thank you. Likewise. So yeah, tell everybody where they can find y'all. That's why I was saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was going before you gave us our flowers. <laughs> <laughs> they find you. Give them your social media, the websites, because y'all got a lot of services. Yes. Yeah. Right? So um, you can reach us at um, aaikarenhands.org. And actually, that's the best place to reach us because we will have all of our um, links on there for you to kind of find us on different platforms um, that we are currently adding ourselves to. We we in the past was catering to our audience and our audience are older people. And older people don't Facebook for the most part yeah. and Instagram. And yeah. so then I was like, hold on, Andrea, you got to get, you know, they do have kids and grandkids. So let's, let's tailor to that as well. So like I said, the looking at our website is the best way um, to get all of our platforms um, um, that we're currently on. So we get all the services that we offer, which is again, transportation, in-home care, massage, um, maid service. Maid service. Um, typically, we do that for the clients in their home. So, you know, that's that's how you can find that. And commercial facilities. And we do commercial cleaning as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Y'all do everything. Uh, Y'all do everything. <laughs> One stop shop. Miss Angelica, do you have anything yes. special? Any, anywhere to meet you anywhere? Yeah. Anything? So, I'm still new, still building out, but I did finish my website. Um, nice. So, it is life in full color yeah. CW.com. And you can message me through there and everything. Cool. I'm the researcher for the group. I would have never known that that's something you just put up. It was so aesthetically pleased. <laughs> I, yeah, that, that, that website's dope. <laughs> She's a Virgo, so you know. So. Oh, Virgo's rule. We're the best. We're the best. We're the best. Did he just say we're the best? We're the best. Well, now, when you're talking about keeping it tight, yeah. don't get you a Virgo. <laughs> get you any earth sign, really. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you again for taking the time out to share your gifts and your and your genius with the with our listeners and our followers. And again, I'm Nate. That's Ben's. We're 212 Black Men in the community, part of the Extraordinary Investment Group that powers the Extraordinary Exchange podcast. Yeah, we're just trying to do some good in the world. And this is part of our tribe. So again, thank you all for listening. Thank you. I'll holler y'all on the next episode. All right. Peace. 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 Pe